this is Riding With Ree. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I am sharing my experience of having bought my first horse in Surrey, UK as an adult, as well as sharing stories from the equestrian world. And today we are gonna be looking on Horse Quest together. I've got my laptop here ready and we're gonna be looking at some of the language that's used in horse adverts and what it actually means. currently sat in the spare room of my house where I have been for like basically a week now. I'm currently coming up to the end of a 10 day isolation. I'm actually on, okay, I'm on day nine. I wrote it all down. The pink bit that you can see is the days that have gone. I got pinged to say that I was a close contact. And in the UK, that means you have to isolate for 10 days. Prior to that, I actually had an incredibly busy week at work. It's been about two and a bit weeks since I last saw Woody. So I'm seeing him on Monday morning. It's Saturday right now when I'm filming this. So I will film that if I don't get too excited. So I've gone on to Horse Quest, scoured through and picked out a bunch of terms I'm going to run through with you now. Some of them is straight up black and white terms and terminology. Some of it is more interpreted. So I have an interpretation. You may have a slightly different one. I would encourage you to write that in the comments. And if there's any that I've left out or any that you think are different, let me know in the comments as well. Obviously in a nice way. I'm a sensitive soul. Age. Let's start with age. So when we talk about a horse's age, there are sort of levels to an age that make them slightly different to humans. So most horses are usually backed between between three and four years old, sometimes slightly younger for racing. It's quite a contentious issue when to back a horse, so I'm not gonna dive into it, but for the sake of this video, between three and four years old. So a five-year-old horse would be considered a young horse. Between six and 10 is a popular age. When I bought Woody, he was eight. He's now just turned nine. That's considered a popular age because they are young enough to still be athletic and have a lot of like life left in them, but they're old enough to have some experience and be able to look after the rider. As you move from 10 to 15, a 15-year-old is considered a very veteran horse and that's where you start getting words like schoolmaster as well thrown around. A schoolmaster is a horse who has been there, done that and kind of look after their riders because they've had so much experience. Let's go into some of the other terms. Not a novice ride. This comes up quite a lot on horse adverts and in essence it means not suitable for a beginner rider. Typically the advert will elaborate on why that horse is not a novice ride but sometimes it's down to their age, they just need someone a bit more confident who can help them when they're being a bit wobbly or it's that they have a particular thing that they do that requires a confident rider. Perfect mother-daughter share. Now this was actually on Woody's advert. What I understand a mother-daughter share to be is kind of just that. So it's the kind of horse who could be ridden by a mum who maybe has some riding ability and maybe has ridden for a while but only sort of does basic stuff, maybe does a bit of schooling, wants to do a bit of hacking. And then you have a daughter who wants to do something more competitive. Generally a horse that would fit into that category is someone who is super straightforward, easy to do, can be ridden by multiple people and is generally very well behaved. That is what I consider a mother-daughter share to be. Good to load, shoe, clip and catch. This is a set of behaviours you will see on adverts and they are a sort of set of desired behaviours. Good to load means that they are good to put in trailers or lorries and good to travel. They're not going to get stressed or start moving around in the boxes or whatever when you're travelling. Good to shoe just means they're good for your farrier. They're going to be easy when it comes to doing their shoes or trimming their feet. Good to clip is when you're taking the hair off the horse in winter time to make them less sweaty and everything else. Some horses don't like being clipped but if it says good to clip generally that's what it should mean. And then good to catch just means they're good to get in from the field. You're not going to go out with a head collar and they're going to be running away or difficult to catch. Good to hack alone or in company. So this means that the horse is happy to go out riding on the trails or outside of the yard out hacking either by themselves so just you and the horse or with other horses. That's all that that means. They're not nappy which is another word for a horse that either doesn't want to leave home. I believe in the US it's also called being barn sour so that's that term. Sensible in big open spaces. So this again just means when you go to a big wide open field that horse is not going to get hot headed, overexcited or difficult to manage. They are sensible in big open spaces. We'll go first or last. So this is a this is attached to the kind of sensible in big open spaces but it just means that horse is happy to either lead when you have a group of horses or they're happy to go at the back. They're not going to get stressed or wind themselves up by being behind and they're not going to be scared and spooky when they're at the front of the ride. Bomb proof in the heaviest of traffic. So bomb proof is a term that we use which describes horses who are pretty unflappable, unfazable. They don't get stressed in this case by traffic, by, and the heaviest of traffic means lorries, farm machinery, tractors, big things like uh, diggers. That's what heavy traffic means. So if they're bomb proof in heavy traffic, it means that they should be comfortable around big vehicles. Bomb proof in general as a term means that they should be comfortable and not get spooky around flags and, 
you know, rustling paper and out hacking. Things don't phase them. Basically, they don't get like, they don't jump when they see things. Sold from the field or sold as a project. Sold from the field generally means that that horse has been turned out in the field or is has not been ridden for a significant amount of time. So if a horse is sold from the field, they are generally sold needing to be brought back into full work. You wouldn't be able to see them under the saddle, but you're essentially starting them from scratch again after a significant break from riding. Sold as a project means that they may have had some experience under the saddle, but it generally means they need quite a significant amount of work to get them up to standard of what we would consider like a normal riding horse. Could turn his hoof to anything. <laughs> this is a phrase that just means that that horse could go on to do a multitude of disciplines, that they've tried a lot of things or they're proving to be an easy horse to do when it comes to jumping, dressage, fun rides, hunting, da da da, like they could do anything. That's kind of what that means. A trainable brain. This comes up quite a lot on horses that are under a competition advert. But a trainable brain just means that that horse is proving to be smart and wanting to learn and picking things up quickly and can be taught stuff quickly. So when you're schooling, teaching new movements in dressage or teaching ways to jump or trying to give that horse new things to do, they are proving to be very good at learning and picking stuff up quickly. Dope on a rope. This is a horse who is very laid back, very easy going, very easy to manage. You know, you could put your grandma on them and hack them out. That is a dope on a rope. Just very simple, easy, super laid back kind of horse. A good stamp. This is typically seen on adverts of Irish drafts or slightly heavier breeds, I would say, but it means that they are a good example of the breed. Like confirmationally, they are a good representation of the breed. They're a good stamp. Has been under the saddle for X amount of time. The advert might say, oh, they've been under saddle for two months now. It means that it's been two months since they were first sort of sat on and they, they've been ridden away for younger horses. Snaffle mouthed. So this might say snaffle mouthed out hacking or always snaffle mouthed or snaffle mouthed for dressage. And you should pay attention to which one. <laughs> and if it's saying snaffle mouthed for a certain discipline, it generally means that they need a stronger bit in other disciplines. But snaffle mouthed is in reference to the snaffle bit, which is one of the most soft bits that exists. It, it basically says that the horse is not strong in those disciplines. So snaffle mouth for cross country would mean that that horse is very easy to pull up doesn't tank off or, or bolt or whatever when you're doing cross country they are easy to control in a snaffle never been sick or sorry it's a phrase that's used that's thrown about it it generally means that they don't get ill they don't get sick they don't go lame they're just they're very um healthy all the time that's what sick or sorry means low mileage this is a term that means that the horse for their age has not done as much as they might have or otherwise done so if a horse has low mileage it's kind of like a car i hate to use that analogy but in this case it makes sense if you have a car that's quite old but actually it hasn't done that many miles it's probably going to go for longer than you expect it to if you have an older horse who's got low mileage it probably means that they'll be able to like go longer be have a longer ridden career than you would expect because actually the wear and tear on them as a horse is lower than you would expect. Okay, let's dive into some of these competition terms. For starters, I'm gonna go affiliated versus unaffiliated, and then I'm gonna dive into show jumping, eventing, and dressage, tell you some terms around them, and then some general competition terms. So firstly, affiliated versus unaffiliated. Affiliated is when a competition is run by a organization. So affiliated to British dressage, affiliated to British show jumping, affiliated to British eventing and is run under those rules. Unaffiliated events are just the kind of local shows and events that you would see at your local yard. I guess affiliated is seen as slightly more prestigious, more competitive, they're, you know, they're more like serious. So unaffiliated would be kind of riding club level stuff. I've never gone affiliated. It's a dream of mine, but I have not yet done it. It's also more expensive. Okay, so I just said British dressage, British show jumping, British eventing. And these are often shortened on adverts to BD, British dressage, BE, British eventing, and BS, British show jumping. And within them, they have their own little lingo. So let me dive into some of the show jumping terms. So in show jumping, you might see a term on an advert that says something like, they have 30 points up to newcomers. And you're like, what does that mean? What does that mean? So in show jumping, there are several levels of classes. You have BN or British Novice, which is 90 centimeters high. Then you have Discovery, which is one meter. Then you have Newcomers, which is one meter 10. 
Fox Hunter, which is one meter 20. And for each level and each round that you do, you can gain points. I don't pretend to know all of the point systems for British show jumping because I've never done it. But in this case, the 30 points up to newcomers would indicate that they have jumped up to one meter 10 and they have a record with British show jumping. And usually if you have a horse that's gone affiliated, you can also look up their record if you get their show name. And that is quite a common thing to do. I was looking up records and I was looking at horses. It can be quite illuminating to see a horse's record because you can see every Every run they've ever done you can see how many stops they had or poles down or run outs or stuff like that and it's quite helpful okay so eventing terms grassroots eventing so you might see something that says they would be great for a grassroots rider grassroots just means the starting level of the sport so in British eventing that is BE 80 80 centimeters and BE 90 and again in eventing you might see names shorted to BE 80 BE 90 BE 100 these are just the heights and the levels of the sport which are affiliated to height so 80 centimeters 90 centimeters 100 centimeters of course it's not as simple as that with each level you get more complex things like the type of water jump that you're expected to do and things like that and the type of dressage test but for all intents and purposes it's the levels of the sport and to be honest if you're going higher than b100 you should really be understanding the terms beyond this but I'm reading them off a screen because I don't know them by heart. BE 80, which is the introductory level. BE 90, BE 100, BE 100 plus, BE 105. These are all affiliated to height. Then you go into British novice, or sorry, not British novice, just novice, which is a maximum show jumping height of 115 centimeters and a maximum cross country of 110. Then you have intermediate novice, then you have intermediate, then you have advanced intermediate, then you have advanced. Okay, dressage. So in dressage you might see uh, a term on an advert that says something like regularly scoring high 60s and early 70s in his test. So in dressage tests and in affiliated dressage tests you are given points for every single movement and then those points are flipped into a percentage at the end of the test. I think my most of my tests have been in the 60s which is considered good. Today's score sheet sevens across the board except for this 6.5 which is an unfortunate change. And this was a uh, intro test we did a few weeks ago. And the difference between the marks, this was 69.7 and this one was 66. So really big improvement, I'm very pleased. 70 test is considered a good test. So high 60s and early 70s would be a, de a very decent test from this, this rider. You might see something that says they're schooling at elementary level. This again is in relation to the levels of dressage. And with each level of dressage, the movements get more difficult. So the levels of dressage are intro, preliminary, novice, elementary, medium, advanced medium, advanced, pre-St. George, intermediate one, intermediate two, and Grand Prix. So to give you a kind of idea of the spectrum, I am currently working at preliminary, so the second level, and our Olympic riders work at Grand Prix. So that's the kind of the spectrum. <laughs> Okay, so let's go into some of the more general competition terms. So we'll take a miss from the rider. It means if the rider doesn't see the stride up to a fence, so can't see what distance they're gonna jump from, or they do something wrong and mess it up, the horse will like pick it up. They'll be like, I've got this, you just sit and enjoy the ride. <laughs> it basically means that the horse knows their job and uh, will we'll look after the rider they can sort themselves out basically. A scopey jump, for horse jumps a jump and there's quite a lot of gap between the horse and the jump, sorry, with between the, the jump and the horse, there's a gap. You might see people say like, no scope, no hope. And it basically means like the horse has a big jump. They have a lot of potential. We'll quickly go up the levels. This means that where the horse is working right now with the right rider, they would quickly move up in the competition levels that I just laid out below in the chosen disciplines. It means that they basically have the potential to go much further in competition life than they currently are. Oh, one final one that's so important because I got this wrong. Do not mistake the word novice for the word amateur. When we talk about an amateur rider, an amateur rider in eventing is actually quite good. If you see something that's like, oh, this would make a great amateur's horse, they just mean not a professional rider in competition, but a competition amateur, which is actually quite a good rider. So don't make that mistake. Novice is beginner, amateur is like a non-professional competitive rider. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Finally, let's finish with a few vices. These are things that that owners or, or, or I guess undesirable from, from buyers. Again, it's very contentious. Vices, some people don't mind vices, some people don't want them. It's completely up to you. But these are what some vices are. So box walking, this is when horses walk in a circle around their stables, generally considered a vice, usually associated with stress. Wind sucking, this is when a horse will kind of grab, usually wood, 
and they suck they make like a sucking noise and it can be annoying because they can break fencing and ruin wood wooden fencing and stuff some owners don't like it some owners don't mind there are ways to kind of manage wind sucking and, and indeed manage box walking and stuff and then weaving is another big vice which basically is when a horse will sway and shift their weight from one foreleg to the other and they sort of switch swing their head from one side to the other that's weaving you can google all these i'm sure there'll be examples but those are some vices there are so many more uh the horse world is a very bizarre place when it comes to language and my best advice if you're looking for a horse yourself is to always have someone more experienced with you but yes i hope you enjoyed these if there's any i forgot list them below any that you've heard that you know definitions of write them below and i will see you next week which will hopefully be my reuniting with woody and then the week after i hope to be sharing with you a, a spa day at nodwood house they invited woody and i back for a spa day which i will of course vlog they are every friday at 4 p.m british summertime i will see you then thank you so much for watching bye